What's up guys, welcome back to another video. So if you guys did see the last video, you guys saw that I was kind of juggling between the E36 and the CB7, well, actually both CB7s because I was actually kind of getting this thing taken apart and putting the front suspension, stock front suspension back on this thing so I can get it out of here. Because any day now, this thing should be getting picked up just so I can get all of the junk out of here and uh, make some room so I could get the ball rolling on that CB7 coupe project. So, uh, so yeah, that should be coming in the next video. But while I was taking the CB7 apart, I came across all of the uh, aftermarket gauges that I was running on it. So I found this gauge right here. This is the Innovative. Uh, it's a water temperature and uh, voltage gauge. So I came across that and it just so happens that the E36, the uh, coolant temperature gauge in here is currently not working. It's, it's not giving me any sort of reading and I'm not exactly sure why, just because, um, I mean, it could be something that I wired incorrectly. It could be the switch itself. I did do all of like the chassis harness completely from scratch. I built that all custom. Uh, if you wanna check that out, that's gonna be a couple videos back. It's, it's a while ago, but you guys can check that video out. Uh, custom chassis harness and stuff. So I could have made a mistake while wiring that, but I think it might be the sensor or something. So I could replace the sensor or I could just wire up this uh, aftermarket gauge that'll give me a more accurate reading. And I just think it'll be better overall anyway. Um, the only issue that I'm having at the moment is deciding on a place to uh, mount the gauge because I could mount it right here. I could mount the gauge in this area. Um, but yeah, I'm just not really too sure where I wanna mount it because I haven't decided on something for it to be like permanent. But anyway, today, that's what I'm gonna be getting into. So I'm just gonna get right into it and I'll show you guys what the one issue is with this gauge. Let's get to it. All right, so this is the gauge I'm working with here, uh, innovative. It's a uh, coolant temperature and it has the voltage. So with this gauge, the number actually gives you the temp. So it actually gives you the temp in, in uh, Fahrenheit. And then this little bar right here will give you the, uh, the voltage. So, you can actually set this up and actually like program this gauge to like give you different colors for different thresholds and stuff like that. So you can kind of program it and then there's a red warning light right here. That's just like a warning light, you know, so it'll just flash uh, and you can program that as well. You can program that uh, warning light threshold so you can set it to what temperature you want it to start flashing at you and give you a warning, you know. But I do have one major issue with this gauge. So. This is the temperature sensor that came out of the CB7. And you can kind of see right here that the wires are ripped. And if you look over here, the connector, it, the wires basically just ripped out of the connector. So right here, just disconnects. That's the other side of the connector and it just ripped out. And along with that, the wires going to the sensor itself, a lot of them got frayed, got ripped up and stuff. So there's a couple things I could do right now to kind of just get past this and just kind of wire this up and still use the gauge. So what I'm thinking with the wiring is this. So, so I'll just kind of explain it. So basically it comes from the gauge, boom, boom. There's a brown wire. The brown wire goes to a connector. So this is the signal for the actual temperature sensor. That black wire is a ground. So I just got to find the ground for that. And then it goes through this wire. And this is like a heat shrinked wire. They have some protection on there. So then it goes along, goes along, and then right here, it's messed up. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna cut it right here. Then I'll take out the wires, cut it right here, splice it in. That way I could continue on with the length of it. And they, like uh, Innovative makes this pigtail super long so that it'll give you a lot of room so you can run it into your engine bay and stuff. So this cable is long anyway so if i just kind of shorten it up by splicing it shouldn't be a big deal and then from there it goes to the connector and from the connector this is where it depends on if i find these pins if i could find these pins at a store then i should be able to repin this connector use it and then boom i have a connector going to the sensor if i can't find a pin i don't really want to wait to get this little pin shipped so 
if i can't find it anywhere i'm just gonna cut the wire here splice it in right there and basically it's just gonna be one solid wire from the sensor all the way back to this little connector right here so there will still be some disconnect but it won't be as short right here that's only if i can't find this little pin so that's the first thing i'm gonna go do i'm gonna head over to uh, auto parts store see if i could find this and uh we'll go from there but before i head over to the store i'm gonna check out where i'm gonna be mounting this sensor so this is a one eighth mpt I, I forget exactly what the size of this is but i'm gonna take it out and check it but i was kind of looking for a place where i'm gonna mount it um i was thinking this here i'm not exactly sure what this sensor is originally but i don't have it connected and it wasn't connected when i got the car so i might just take this sensor out and use this sensor in its place the only issue with that is if you look at it this is way bigger so i might have to run an adapter port so like a reducer so i just need to find the size and thread pitch of this right here that way i could get an adapter that'll convert it from that size and thread pitch over to this size and thread pitch but yeah i think this should work again i'm just gonna do some research and find out for sure all right guys big bad news so i went over to the store i hit like three different stores including an ace and i couldn't find uh an adapter like one of those reducers and i couldn't find any sort of connectors or anything so we're just kind of winging it right now so this is where i'm at uh i just kind of got a little workstation set up in the laundry room here just because there's pretty good light in here and it's already dark out so this is where i'm at so far so we have the sensor um this is going to be coming this is the connector that goes to the gauge so i went through and i already cut out a damaged part of the cable so this is the part that was super damaged so you can see right there boom all janked up and right there you can see there's actually exposed conductor material so that's no good so i went through uh i crimped it back together heat shrink the inside and then put a big piece of heat shrink over uh, i didn't cut it long enough so that's kind of an issue but it should be good enough and then uh going this way if you guys saw earlier it got kind of crushed around this area so i basically just stripped out the uh like this heat shrink right here just to kind of see if any of the actual conductors are exposed or if they got damaged and there's no damage to the actual conductors themselves the insulation of the wires are still good so i'm probably still going to run it like this i'm just going to throw some heat shrink over this part that's exposed and then uh and then over here i couldn't find anything for the connector so i'm basically just going to cut this off and then just splice it in to this right here and then later on down the road uh, in the future if i want to then i could just go through cut this off and then add a connector but uh that'll be later on down the road and since i couldn't find a reducer adapter to go from m14 by 1.5 to this eighth inch mpt i'm basically just going to use this blocks like adapter so on the factory uh coolant hose i'm just going to cut it and then put this little sandwich adapter in there and that'll be the sensor and I'll try to put it as close to the thermostat as possible so I'm getting like an accurate reading closer to the actual thermostat. And yeah, I think that should be good. So right now I'm just gonna go through and clip this off, put the heat shrink on before I forget, and then I'll go through and crimp this in place. And I'll remember to put heat shrink on that. So yeah, so basically it's gonna be like this. So there won't be a connector in between. The only connector in between the sensor and the gauge will be this uh, tiny little Molex connector right there. But for now, that should be good. It'll give me a reading and I won't be driving it blind. Okay, I just got done fixing uh, this uh, coolant temperature sensor cable. So this is kind of what I'm left with here. So starting from the gauge, going through the cable. This is the first 
like crimp right here. This is where I took out all of this damaged wire right here. And this is the part where it was kind of like smashed up a little bit. Just got some heat shrink on there and it's all good. And then it goes all the way to the sensor. And then this right here, just before the sensor is the last crimp. This is gonna be where the connection was at. This is where that connector was at. So now it's just solid crimped wire. And then this is just some of the stuff that I clipped off of there. So I'm still gonna keep this connector because the actual like physical connector is still good. I basically just need pins for this connector. So I think this is just like a regular like Molex connector. So if I just go online, get Molex pins, uh, they're super easy to find so so it is nighttime i could go through and go and start installing this stuff but i'd rather just wait for tomorrow wait for some sunlight so i'm just gonna pick back up again tomorrow and i'm probably gonna start off with mounting the actual sensor because there's no point in even doing anything moving forward with any sort of gauge or anything if i can't get the sensor plugged into the cooling system so if i can't even get the sensor on then why even move forward with routing wires and mounting a gauge? All right, guys, so it's the next day over here. Um, not too sure where I left off last night, but uh, got the sensor. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure I left off um, splicing this uh, sensor all together. And I did a little bit more research and this is the uh, radiator fan switch. So this is gonna be part of like the AC system and that's why this car doesn't even have this connected because this doesn't have any of the harness for the AC, uh, AC compressor or anything like that, you know? Uh, all of the HVAC system has been removed from this car before I even got it. So that's why this is gone. So because I don't need that, I would really like to use this port, but I would have to wait a couple of days for this to actually get shipped to me because the only place I could find it is online. So I'm very impatient and I don't really want to wait just for that little fitting and have to pay shipping for a little fitting so i'm gonna order it once i actually have like more parts to order so for now i'm just gonna use this like coolant hose adapter hopefully it's big enough it does look like it's a little bit smaller compared to the actual like radiator hose and my goal is to not have to cut the factory radiator hose so i want to use this end and butt it up against the end that I take the hose off, right? So the plan is to take this hose off right here and then use this end of the existing radiator hose and put it, uh, clamp it up against this and then use this short piece of hose, maybe a little bit shorter. I'll try to see how short I can get, but the goal is to try to get this adapter as close to the bottom port of the radiator. So I wanna get that all the way as close as i can to that and then have the factory radiator hose going to this end that way i don't have to cut the factory radiator hose and once i eventually get this fitting all i have to do is just take this adapter out and i can still use this in the future on the cord then i can just put the sensor in the adapter right there boom call it a day but before i go any further i'm just going to go through and disconnect the radiator hose from the bottom and see if it'll even fit up against this block because that's a whole nother thing is if, if this radiator hose adapter diameter is the same as that. I'm hoping so. Uh, another thing that I wanna take care of while I'm kind of doing some wiring stuff with the E36, I wanna wire up the uh, backlight to the cluster. So since I'm gonna be doing stuff with like gauges and stuff, may as well just kinda of add a couple wires so that way I could get a backlight on the cluster whenever I turn the lights on. So I have a couple things on the checklist for the E36, so I'm just gonna get right to it. All right, so I took this end off just because right here, this little clamp is really hard to get to. It's like in a stupid spot. I would have to take the expansion tank off just to be able to get to that one. And already my plan backfired. So you can see this inlet and look at that. Like, so if you look at the hose, you can see that throughout the length of the hose it's actually pretty much the same size as this right here but then where it goes to the actual uh, thermostat housing you can see it bulges out a bunch you can see it gets really big so if i do want to uh, wire up this water temperature sensor 
I am going to have to cut this hose. So it's not a big deal. I mean, if I want to put a factory hose back on it, I can just go to the auto parts store and get another hose. So I think I am going to cut it and just run this little uh, blocks, coolant block. I don't know. I just, I just really didn't want to cut it. I just kind of wanted to keep the factory hose. I really just wanted to use this port, to be honest. I think this would have been the most simple thing. I really wish I could have found that port, but I can't find an adapter at any store and I don't want to wait for shipping. I'll get silicone hoses on this and it'll be nicer anyway in the long run. So whatever, I'll just cut the hose and now I could actually drive it with a coolant temperature. Yeah, let's get to it. All right, guys, back with a little update here. So it already got dark. As you can see, I ran into a couple issues with this and uh, I kind of cut it in a part where there was like angles and stuff and I wasn't cutting it so straight. So I ended up having to cut a lot of the hose out and I got really scared because I almost didn't have enough length to connect it to the uh, radiator and the thermostat. So that got kind of sketchy for a little bit, but it's all plugged in. I haven't turned it on or anything, so I don't know if there's any leaks at the moment, but every single fitting, I made sure it was flush and I tightened them really tight. So I don't think there should be any leaks. And then from here, you can see the sensor. I'm just gonna route it along where my existing harness goes through all the way along there. And then it's gonna go into the firewall there. Then I already have the uh, wire for the sensor coming over here. So I'm, I'm not too sure. Again, I'm not too sure where I'm gonna mount the gauge, but first thing tomorrow, that's what I'm gonna start on. I'm gonna actually start wiring up the gauge itself now that I actually have the sensor taken care of. So while the sun's down and while I can't really get that much good footage, I'm gonna go to the store, get the water and stuff. I'll go through and bleed the cooling system. Uh, I'm not really gonna film any of that. I'm sure you can find all kinds of videos online on how to bleed the cooling system of an E36. So. I'll take care of that and uh, I'll get back with you guys tomorrow once I actually get started on the gauge inside the car. So I've had the car idling for, I would say like 20, 30 minutes here. So I'm pretty sure the thermostat has already opened by now. Last night I did get some VP water wetter. I got the distilled water. And right now I have the sensor just kind of wired up. So I'm just using these little gator clips so yeah, I just wanna make sure nothing is leaking over there uh, while the cooling system is under pressure because that's gonna be the real test there. Uh, other than that, now I need to start looking for a place or start actually deciding on a spot where I wanna mount that gauge because I wanna get that mounted next so I can start wiring everything up. And I don't really wanna do the pillar pods. I don't wanna do some pods like sticking up over here. You know, that I think that looks kinda whack. So. It's either right here, right here, possibly right here. What about right there? Damn, that would be kind of smooth. I kind of like that because I don't have the stock coming out this way. I'm not using that. Huh. And there's really nothing behind this. It's literally just a blank piece of dash. I'm going to measure this up and see if it'll fit here because this might also work for me so yeah i don't know i'm gonna decide on something and uh you guys will know in a little bit what i decide on all right guys so i just got the gauge mounted boom so yeah i kind of liked that spot it's kind of like out of the way kind of low-key kind of in the same field of view as the factory one I just feel like this was honestly the easiest way just because right now this isn't even like fully mounted yet and this switch panel honestly isn't really that heavy and plus I have it wired so it's kind of like holding this down. So with this gauge, the gauge does kind of have a little bit of weight. So I think with this, as soon as I step on it, it's gonna wanna fall back, you know? So I just think mounting it right here for now is just really easy, boom, super solid. Can't even like rotate it. And I don't even have the bracket mounted in the back. I literally just, boom, slipped it in. But I just wanna make this all kinda look good and kinda route it the same way as my, uh, as my chassis harness. So right now I just have to find a ground for the gauge and for the sensor. And then I need to find a 12 volt power source, boom. 
And then from there, I could bring in the harness or the connector from the sensor and plug that into this. And all of that will be nice and routed along with my chassis harness going to the power source over there. So at this point, I have that fuse box over there. There's a little fuse bus right there at the bottom. And I have like two open ports on that fuse bus. So I can just uh, use one of those fuses and that'll be the 12 volt power source. And I also like while I'm doing some wiring and stuff over here, I also wanted to wire up the backlight for the cluster. I just thought while I'm doing this, may as well get the cluster lit up as well. So with that extra spot in the fuse, I'm just gonna be using that as switched power. So I'm gonna be using, I think it's like aux one or aux two out of the PDM to uh, power up that uh, circuit on the fuse box. So yeah, I'm gonna start uh, kind of like routing things out, uh, setting things in place where I kind of want them to route. That way I can kind of get some measurements for the wires, uh, get a count of wires, and I'm just gonna get all my supplies ready. So uh, yeah, let's get to it. So I just got done wiring everything up. So I have the gauge all wired up. Um, so I think I need to program the gauge. I don't think it's programmed at the moment because as soon as I started it, it starts off at 120, which I think 120 is like the default uh, temperature. I'm gonna have to keep an eye out for that, but I'm letting it warm up at the moment. But another thing, if you look at the cluster, and then I turn the lights on, the cluster lights actually come on. So cluster lights come on and then I actually wired up the gauge to the lights so it actually dims. So I don't know if you can tell right now with the light on, but see if it dims. So it gets brighter and then when I turn the lights on, it dims a little bit. So yeah, I don't know if you can see it on video, but it does kind of dim out a little bit. But uh, yeah, you can kind of see the wire is actually routed pretty clean, but you can kind of see it's all of the white wires. And if you see over here on the fuse bus down there, it's actually full now. I actually have every single circuit on that fuse bus filled up. But again, I'm just gonna keep an eye out on it. Probably gonna cruise the car around and we'll see how it goes. All right guys, so I just got back from cruising. I still have it idling. And as soon as I parked, the temperature started going way up. So while I was driving around the whole time, it was at like 130, 127. That's kind of where it stayed. And as soon as I pulled up, as soon as I kind of slowed down and there was no airflow, it started climbing up really quick. Uh, right, it, it went all the way up to 203, 
that was the highest and now it's actually starting to go down yeah it looks like it's going down now and uh, I'm just kind of curious to see where it's gonna actually like idle at so I have the light off now so take a look at the gauge I'm gonna turn the lights on so you can kind of see the dimming in action so you kind of see it but yeah you can see it kind of dims out and then uh, the actual backlight of the cluster is actually working so So yeah, and it turns off with the lights, turns on with the lights, boom. And uh, yeah, it looks like it's around 174, 176. That's kind of like where it's idling at after running for about an hour and driving around. So yeah, I mean, I'm super happy with it. But anyway, it's dark right now. There's, I can't really film much else, so I'll get back with you guys in the morning. But as soon as I turn on the gauge, you can see that it's at 120 and that's all it's reading. So that's kind of the issue right there. So I just got back from the store and then I got this adapter. So this is the cable that comes with the actual gauge. So if you get this gauge with the kit, it comes with this cable that you plug in to the out port. So it's plugged into the out port of the gauge plugged into this so then the serial adapter and then we could plug it in okay turn on power so the gauge is on and then I should be able to connect with the software ah there we are all right so right now you can see the gauge is being programmed I have the software open and it looks like it's not an issue with mine so it looks like the range of this gauge is 120 to 250 so the gauge itself doesn't really even have that big of a range yeah so i mean basically you have just basic settings with this you can set the degrees from uh, fahrenheit to celsius you can set like the high temperature alarm so water temperature alarm right now it's set to 250 uh, i have it enabled so you can turn that on and off and then over here with the voltage um right now the max voltage is like 14.4 so basically from 12 volts to 14.4 it'll be reading green from 9.9 .9 to 11.9 it'll be reading yellow and anything below that it'll be in the red and right here you can set the same thing with the low voltage alarm um yeah that's pretty much it it's already programmed i guess i mean i'm not really able to fix what I thought was an issue, but uh, yeah, that's just kind of the gauge itself. I'm probably gonna clean the car off a bit because there's a lot of bird poop everywhere from being under this big tree here. But uh, yeah, probably clean it up, go for a cruise, and, and I'll get back with you guys when I have some more updates.
Um, I don't think I'm gonna be getting into much more and I do have some parts coming in for this. I think I already mentioned that. And uh, once I actually get some things going on the CB7 coupe, definitely gonna keep you guys posted on that stuff. So other than that, I think I'm gonna wrap this video up here, start editing this. So uh, yeah, get this out as soon as possible. See you guys in the next one, later.